The main thing here, I got this video card today, and uh, yeah, I didn't really need a new video card. Um, I had a 9600 GT, and for the games I was playing um, on my 19-inch monitor, which isn't a huge monitor these days, um, you know, it was perfectly suitable. But I could not pass this deal up. This guy basically traded me straight up. This didn't cost me anything. Um, he got something bigger. I think he got a 4890. And uh, he wanted to run an, uh, an NVIDIA card uh, for physics, which is something some people are doing now. They'll have their ATI cards, and they'll throw in an NVIDIA card just to do the physics. So, hey, so what the hell? He wanted my 9600 GT, and uh, he wanted to get rid of this. So it kind of worked out. I mean, I couldn't really say no uh, to such a good deal. So didn't really need the extra power, but, uh, you know, this, this is definitely a... a pretty good step up from a 9600 GT. Um, it's probably almost, I'd say almost 100% more powerful. The frame rates I, I looked at on an E8400, I looked at like Far Cry 2, Crisis, um, Company of Heroes, um, and the frame rates were going up about 80 to 90% from a 9600 GT to a 4870. So. It's definitely an upgrade, you know, even though I didn't need it, uh, I, I jumped on it for the for the price. This is a Palette 4870, it's a 512 meg version. When the 4870 first came out, it was a 512 meg uh, DDR5, of course. The 4870, first video card to use DDR5, that's something that uh, AMD or ATI uh, is using, is DDR5. Very fast memory. Um, now most of the 4870s you'll see there'll be a gig DDR5. So this is one of the early 4870s. It's probably um, five, six months old. He probably bought it uh, when, it, when it came out. Um, uh, but this pallet version has a, a couple of unique features on it, which um, I guess I'll show you. Uh, there's the card itself there. I guess the typical stuff is your, uh, your DVI to HDMI adapter. Your DVI to uh, SVGA. If you have an older style monitor, you, know, you need to connect. Uh, and you don't have the DVI on the monitor. Typical stuff there. Uh, but the card itself has a few unique features on it. And when the 4870 came out six months ago, uh, it was still is a very very powerful card. Um, very fast card. The biggest problem with them when they first came out was heat. Uh, they ran very, very hot. A lot of people had overheating uh, issues with the 4870s, especially if maybe their case didn't have, you know, really good airflow, which is one thing that you should have if you have a card like this. Um, this obviously is addressing that problem with the dual fan setup on here. Um, as you can see, you got some heat pipes there going to the, the GPU cooler. Uh, underneath that, there is uh, a heat sink for the voltage regulation MOSFETs, and um, and with the dual fans blowing over over all of that, this one's not going to have a, any heating issues. That's for sure. Um, does require two six-pin PCI Express power connectors, uh, so make sure you have a decent video card. If you get a or power supply, sorry, if you get a a card like one of these 4870s or 4890s, you get a big video card. You know, make sure you have a decent power supply. You know, if you have a, a generic, cheap power supply, you're going to run into problems. Sooner or later, you're going to run into problems. Um, so make sure you have a decent power supply with uh, a card like this, of course. Uh, PCI Express 2.0, obviously. Um, there's your Crossfire bridges. Uh, if you're not familiar with Crossfire, it's basically ATI's equivalent to... Uh, NVIDIA's SLI is running multiple video cards in one machine and uh, with Crossfire if you have an Intel or AMD chipset which supports Crossfire on your motherboard depending on your motherboard you can run two three up to four that's right you can run up to four ATI video cards in one machine so you can have four of these all stacked together uh, which is crazy but you can do it, and this is how the cards link together uh, from one card to the next. 
A um, couple unique features on this card is obviously it has your dual dual link DVI I uh, ports here, pretty standard. This is a Display Port. Um, display Port. I believe it's being pushed by Samsung. Maybe a few others. Some of the new monitors are starting to come out with this Display Port. Uh, it wants to replace the DVI or even HDMI as uh, it offers more bandwidth. It'll eventually offer higher resolutions at 120 refresh rates. Um, it's going to be hard to catch on because DVI and HDMI are such big standards right now for someone to come out and, and try and push a new um, standard for connecting monitors. It's, it's going to take a while to catch on, but uh, that, that may eventually be the next uh, thing that you see on most of your monitors. Um, the most unique thing on this card is this switch here. This is a turbo switch. A unique option on this palette card. Actually, this card has two biases on it. The first BIOS uh, loads up the card at the stock speeds, which is 750 MHz core speed and 3800 DDR5 rated speed for the memory. And when you put it into turbo mode, it overclocks the card to 775 MHz core speed and 4000 MHz rated DDR5 memory speed. So it's a little overclock switch. You want your stock speed or you want it overclocked. Which, uh, as far as I know, is probably one of the first cards to, to do that. And that's, like I said, just one of those neat options, you know, that sets this card apart. For those of you who have been out of the loop for maybe the last six months to a year, ATI has really come a long way. They were falling way behind NVIDIA in the last generation. And these 4800 series, this new generation of card, they redesigned their GPUs from the ground up. They changed their architecture. This has 800 stream processing cores in the GPU. Um, and, um, and like I said, DDR5 is also unique to AMD and ATI. They use DDR5 on a smaller bus to achieve the same memory bandwidth as NVIDIA on a bigger bus. AMD claims that it's cheaper for them to produce the cards on a smaller bus. For example, this DDR5 on a 256-bit bus has the same memory bandwidth as an NVIDIA card with DDR3 on a 512-bit bus. There's less connections to the memory. The memory runs off lower voltage and it runs cooler, so there's the advantages to that. Also, another unique thing ATI does is they have a uh, Realtek audio built right into the GPU. Sounds weird, but all modern ATI cards produce their own sound. Why would you want your video card to produce your own sound? Well, this has a 7.1 audio um, decoder built in. And if you run that DVI to HDMI adapter that I showed, you run your HDMI to your home theater, that's your sound in picture through one cable, and you don't have to patch the sound in to the video card. On some NVIDIAs, you can patch the sound in from your sound card to the video card uh, via a wire, and that'll go through the HDMI. On ATI cards, there's no extra cables required. They would put their own 7.1 audio out through the HDMI. So, the ATI cards have definitely improved. Um, this card is a very fast card for the money, and still today, one of the most common video cards sold right now.